you don't feel the technology. Let's put it this way. The technology is almost like it's not there. And that's how good it is. Yep. It's not a it's not a game changer, it's a new game. Actually. Yes. The MSG Sphere in Las Vegas is now open to the public. The LED screens on the interior and exterior are jaw-dropping. And today I'm joined by Jonathan LeBay and Unique Fournier from Seiko, the manufacturer behind all that LED. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. First question, when did Seiko first get involved with the Sphere project? We got involved in 2018. Um, funny enough, we just finished, at the time, the largest LED screen uh, for a client, Imar, in, uh, in Dubai, for the Burj Khalifa. And uh, we were just coming back from a couple of months over there and uh, got a phone call from uh, Populous uh, to, for a meeting and uh, discussing about a new crazy potential project. And uh, the rest is history. So five years uh, and here we are, the sphere is here and uh, it's pretty awesome. In a normal process, you have you know RFPs and all sorts of stuff like that that happen. And you know, you'd bid on, on things normally with the existing products. The client here, MSG, they took a completely different approach. What they did is they actually went and they selected the very best people on earth from every trade and brought them all together and said, this is the vision. How do we make it happen? So based on that, we had a lot more freedom to speak between the teams and a lot more freedom to explore that you would normally not have in a typical project. And I think that the result when you do see it in real life is clear as day. So let's start on the inside of the building. What were some of the challenges you faced when designing the interior LED screen? The interior was literally rocket science. Well, first of all, it's the highest resolution screen of any type on earth. Right? It's 16K by 16K in resolution, and it is completely envelops the viewers. So essentially, it's a dome. It's a, uh, it's a sphere on the inside as well. And when you do that, you have disappearing pixels. So we have variable pixel pitch going across the surface. Uh, and also it had to be audio transparent because one of the other mega features of this building is it has this futuristic audio by Holoplot. We had to understand how audio functions. We're video people, so we know how video functions, but we had to uh, interact and collaborate with MSG and with the Holoplot team and the audio teams at MSG to understand how audio functions so that we could then start understanding how we design our surfaces to allow audio to slip through. The result of that is a completely pure surface. There is no audio stacks in the building. There's no set pieces except what the artists bring in. Okay, so moving outside now, what were some of the challenges you faced with designing the exosphere? And how did your team determine the final pixel pitch that was used on the surface? So it was an effort led with, uh, with everybody on board, right? With MSG uh, that had specific, as John mentioned, requirements on what's the distance, the ideal distance that this needed to be seen. Uh, also taking in consideration that it was just not a nighttime effort, but it was also a daytime visibility. So that needed to be uh, taken in consideration. I have one of the, uh, what we call the SPOC here, I can show you, but basically it's a, um, it's, the size of a hockey puck, basically. Uh, 48 LED on it. Uh, we have 1.2 million of those on the exterior. At the end, John, what was the final pixel pitch? Around 200. It's about meter. 225 millimeter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Again, variable because it's a sphere. Um, but I mean, but I mean, ultimately, ultimately, it came down. To, it came down to a lot of studies from a bunch of different people, and then mock-ups. A lot of mock-ups. Okay, so you put years of work into this facility. You're there on opening night. You're watching you two. What kind of a reaction did you see from everyone in attendance? We walked in and, I mean, obviously we know what it is. We, we built it. But, you know, we hadn't seen all of the, all the creative yet. And when we walk in, like the U2 shows, like these giant uh, cement blocks, you know, that make up like this cathedral. That was kind of like the look when you came in, right? And we heard people saying like, oh, I, I wonder if they're gonna like, open up curtains or like, uh, how come we're seeing the back wall? And it's like, that, that's a screen. And then all of a sudden, like this thing kind of like, opens up into this vastness. I'm sure Yan will use the same word as me, but I mean, it was completely emotional. I'm probably pretty sure we all shed certain levels of tears <laughs> Absolutely. a few times during the show. 
Absolutely, and we had the uh, the chance to be there with uh, some of our Seiko uh, team member yeah. and the uh, original owners of Seiko, right? Uh, Fred Bassam uh, and every and John Ron and Bassam is the inventor of the LED screen, and he was looking at it, and the smile on it on his face was just, I mean, I was crying. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> beautiful. Well, congratulations to you both. As you have said, it's a brand new ball game with the opening of the Sphere. One last question for you, though: What kind of an impact do you think this will have on the pro AV industry? I hope that what it's going to do is that it's going to bring back a level of elegance to technology. Because I have to say that over, over the last several years, I mean, technology has been abused, thrown here, thrown there, without any care to integration. Um, so that's what I hope, that it's going to bring back a level of elegance and, 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 and future customers are going to be like, you know what, we want to do something of that level of integration or that level of elegance.